everyone paid no attention to what just happened, I definitely didn't hit the stop streaming button. That would be crazy. Who would do that? Hi! Welcome to another episode of Ten Forward Weekly. Uh, my name is Mike Fatum, also known as Ambassador Kell. I am your senior community manager, eyebrow, eyebrow. Uh, and uh, I am joined by one of my favorite people in the universe, the one, the only, Jonathan Herlosh. Say hello, Jonathan Herlosh. Hello, they're in Gorn again. <laughs> hey, uh, Endeavor, we we were cracking up at the never going to give you up, never going to let you down. I I don't know why people are making all these Gorn puns in chat. Uh, it's crazy. I would never have left something on Twitter to lead them in that direction. <laughs> uh, uh, but how you doing, John? How's things? I'm all right. Uh, I'm looking forward to getting this guy out in the wild. I got a couple other fiendish soups on the boil, so it'll be interesting to see this stuff make its way live. Yeah. I, you told me an idea earlier that is in very, very early planning stages uh, and that may or may not actually happen, and I'm still just like, <laughs> if it does happen, it will be the greatest thing. And that's all the teasing y'all are getting, because, again, it may or may not actually happen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, so like I, halfway through implementation, but it's still kind of a question mark. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, you said sorry. You said um like you were gonna finish that sentence with something else, and I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> all right. No. Let's quickly dive into some uh at at assault playable squad fighters is on my list of things I would want, but that's not what we were talking about. No. Uh, let's dive into some fan art, and then we'll uh we'll take a look at the ship we're revealing tonight. Uh, so first of all, uh, Andrew Tweedle. Uh, sent us his hand drawings of uh, some Federation ship designs. I just think these are super cool. He sent us a bunch more, but I thought uh, it would be nice to uh, to show off a couple of them, and they're very cool. I like this one's kind of a got an aircraft look to it. And then this one is kind of a sexier Oberth, which, you know, is not a high bar to clear, uh, but what? <laughs> <laughs> you all know where I stand on frisbees strapped to canoes. All right. Uh, Arion76 sent us this kick-ass shot. Um, it's a Dideridex. It's coming right at us while firing super cool-looking beams. I have no idea what, like, what console or weapon that is, but it looks extremely cool. Uh, and Arion also sent us this shot of their Romulan captain hanging out. Um, I assume that's on the flotilla or new Romulus, but I actually don't know. Someone will tell me in chat. Uh, Mystic Knight the Fam, will we ever get something like the Fleet Museum from Picard? We did it first! It was my idea! We did it for Anyway, uh, we, we sort of do that every year for Star Trek Day. Um, I, I would love if we could add the little circles around Earth Space Dock for it, but that's just a question of whether people want to spend the time, whether production wants to schedule the time. Night at the Fleet Museum? Man. My oh Man. my god, that TFO <laughs> would be great. I already pitched it. Oh, I don't I know if they're going to go for it, though. I mean, there's always a million. <laughs> One of the things about design is you need like a 99% no rate. Like, ideas are so cheap. You have yeah. millions and millions of ideas. Yeah. I love the Double D, though. The Derridex is my favorite ship in Star Trek. And it's, it's not even close. Like it's I, very I pretty. really like that ship. <laughs> if it wasn't for a couple of other ships, it would be high on this too. Uh, Christopher Murphy sent us this shot of him hanging out on Vulcan, just chilling. I like it. Uh, Endeavor sent us a shot of the Jupiter class and the Titan class uh, barreling through space. The Jupiter is an underrated ship, honestly. Like that's just a very pretty look. Yeah. And Endeavor also sent us this shot. Uh, this is, I think, spe specifically for you, John. This is a shot of how cool the Maelstrom torpedoes look. Uh, he just loves them. <laughs> <laughs> that credit goes to Andrew. That was, he did amazing work on those. Yeah. Space uh, Caltrops go. <laughs> uh, Jojo Trek sent us this shot of... Um, Okay, I don't know what class this is. Someone in chat is going to tell me. Uh, I thought it was an Intrepid, but there's four nacelles, so... I, I got nothing. <laughs> uh, can we get President Anton Chekhov? Uh, you know, maybe, but uh, I think we'll have a hard time convincing Al to replace the character named after him. It may, ju it may just be a bit more arm-twisting than I can accomplish. Prometheus, thank you, gangs. 
Uh, all right. Uh, Kyle Pancham sent us this shot of uh, flying down the uh, the spine of the other, uh, which is uh, very relevant to a blog that's going out tomorrow morning. Uh, and that's all you'll hear from me. Mwah. But uh, John knows what I'm talking about. Technically, you guys know what I'm talking about because I accidentally showed it off on a, on a previous stream. But you'll see tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, Kyle Pancham sent, also sent us this really kick-ass shot of his Gorn during the Klingon tutorial. Like, just well-composed. I like what he did with the field of view to make it all fuzzy in the back yeah. and make it look like a real picture. That's that's pretty great. That's good work. All right. So should we, um, should we show off a ship, Jeff? I think we should. I think it's about that time. Mm, all right. Let's... Let's I was thinking of really uh, I was thinking of playing with some toys on my desk for a while first, just you know. <laughs> 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 All right, let's dive into it. Uh, many of you. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Um, I think uh, toys first, ship li- ships later. Okay, oh gap. <laughs> uh, someone's asking for starship prawn. I, I assume that they mean a, a ship based off of a, a small um, sh- shrimp-like animal. Uh, but anyway, let's dive in to uh, this week's ship. A lot of you guessed it, but we're going to show it to you right now. It's the Gord Hunter Pilot Raider! Yeah! <laughs> Um, ID Gaming Federation, of course I watched Power Rangers once and always. Who do you think you're talking to? <laughs> it uh, looks a bit like a Kaldari ship flew through a greenhouse, and I am here for it. I yeah. love it when alien ships get to look actually alien. I didn't realize until I put the, put it on this angle how much this is like a scorpion in space, which is really cool. Yeah, and the um, just the way it moves, like, uh, you know, I guess... Uh, a little bit of a verbal preview, but like uh, this thing, like moves a little like it does on the show. It has like that kind of interesting kind of like yeah, preserve preservation of momentum, like almost a little bit like an unstable airframe in an atmosphere. But obviously, there's no atmosphere. But like it's it's constantly kind of like juking a little bit. Um, looks really cool. Rotatoes. Hit rotatoes. Uh, <laughs> also has a little bit of a. a dinosaur styling it looks a little with that big old like the thing it could either be a scorpion tail or you know like a dino head either way it's sure, very yeah. very lizardy and very gore and i really want to see what's inside that but or like one of those freaky yeah. um what are they called pseudo scorpions like the precursor to scorpions from like prehistoric times yeah hell yeah or the ones from like the uh... bulky tail it's like a <laughs> yeah or the ones from that uh from Ruripente that we have <laughs> oh yeah 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 yeah, the yeah. day one arthropods. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, this was modeled by Tobias Richter, uh, based off of the model from the show. Did a fantastic job. Um, unfortunately, none of the artists we have in-house could make it to this to this week's episode. Time zones are sort of a thing. So uh, we are looking at it in detail. But John and I are not artists, uh, so we will say things like ooh and ah, and that is pretty much all you get. <laughs> <laughs> surface reminds like it's just the texture on this like the layered visibility where you can kind of see the interior it's um i there's a certain like visual appeal for me at least that comes when um the form follows almost exclusively from function where yeah you know if you look at like classic space probes or like other things where like we're really pushing the boundaries of technology they start to make sacrifices to what you'd normally consider to be like regular aesthetics to get to higher levels of performance and this looks like an alien brain did that for a while and i love it <laughs> let's get her uh let's get her moving so you guys yeah. can see a little bit of the back and forth rotation we got going on here as you chase down your enemies uh and of course this is a uh pilot ship as i mentioned mm-hmm. a few minutes ago uh so it does have custom pilot maneuvers let's look at those Ooh. there's check. nothing on the sensors <laughs> uh friend frantic 1708 why the closed captions because sometimes people who can't hear or like captions uh listen to watch streams and we want to make things accessible for them. So, 
There you go. That's why. So yeah, stopped dead, doesn't spin, starts to move, or does one of its pilot maneuvers, and we get a little bit of a spin. All right, so we mentioned already this is a raider ship, John, but tell us a little bit about the design that goes into her. Plasma! So <laughs> it, um, it is a very plasma-y ship. Um, it's got, uh, let's see, it's got a custom plasma quads, uh, not account reclaim, I know, um, just uh, on the ship itself, but they uh, replaced the normal plasma proc with a 30 damage resistance rating debuff for damage over time effects, so they have a chance to proc that on enemy ships they hit. Um, no custom visuals or anything, but yeah, just a little bit different performance, and you're going to hear the sentence damage over time and plasma an awful lot during this. <laughs> That's going <laughs> to we're, we're... surprise tool that will help us later. <laughs> I love that you use that reference all the time. Uh, yeah, if you, every time you hear uh, John say plasma tonight, uh, take a drink, and then please don't drive yourself home. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got uh, we've got these brand new, uh, like you were just saying, uh, oh, these are Polaron cannons. Oh, no, did it not put, are these the ones that come with it, or did it not put the right no. ones on the ship? Nope. It, when do. you get a new ship, it'll carry over your current loadout to the next ship. Yeah, no, I know. All right. Uh, was it? Well, I'll just put plasma on. It just comes with a bunch of plasma cannons, dualies in the front, um, turrets in the back. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, let me get that set up. Uh, but while we're talking about it, uh, yeah. so tell us a little bit more about the uh, the new proc on these babies. So, uh, well, that's pretty much the proc. Is just the, the the only the quads do it. The rest of the plasma cannons are standard. But you, okay. you only really need one proc. Um, on your ship anyway you wouldn't want like a full rack of those guys because the debuff doesn't stack so as long as you're consistently applying it that's really what you care about um and it lasts long enough uh well um, i might as well segue into the starship trait complex plasma fires um the idea there is that during energy weapon firing modes which is defined pretty broadly um we've got it's uh, the the usual fare, uh, so faw beam overload cannon rapid fire can scatter volley but also oh uh i'll shush so the captions don't cover it you can't oh see no! Tooltip right now. <laughs> uh, hmm, how do I make that? How do I fix that problem? I just uh, have to not talk in one long, incredibly unfocused <laughs> sentence. That's constantly <laughs> moving from topic to topic. Uh, well, I'll just read the tooltip out to you guys, um, so that at least you can see it. Um, hmm, maybe I can move the captions to the top of the screen. I can move the captions to the top of the screen. Nice. But now the tooltip isn't showing up. What's going on? Oh, it's got that thing, because I've adjusted it. There we go. Okay. Conspec complex plasma fires. Please tell us more. Right. So during energy weapon firing modes, which includes the usual suspects, but also some of the um, uh, the the special ones from, uh, like, I think. I think this is the one that did that, right? Yeah. Um, in the more details on this, it goes into like an, an explicit list of what counts, but it all, it does count uh, reroute reserves to weapons. It counts surgical strikes. Anything that shares a cooldown with weapon firing modes um, that uses energy weapons um, counts for it. And the, during that, anytime you do plasma damage, you apply a stacking dot that stacks up to 100 times. Um, and you're basically not going to reach that stack limit because it's once per weapon cycle. It's not once <laughs> per damage packet. You keep throwing these damage packet. You keep throwing just... these these challenges down and saying they're not going to do it. And you know that means they're going to do it, right? I know. And they're <laughs> going to enjoy doing it. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Uh... So the uh, uh, yeah, I tried it with like every individual packet of plasma damage triggers it, and it um it got spaghetti pretty quick. So uh, ended up wanting to do it just once per weapon cycle. But it's still like the idea is you know sort of like a monitor lizard bite, like a like a um, yeah Gila monster. Um, you bite the foe and then you follow it. Like a lot of bigger predator monitor lizards have that element where they like do a damaging attack and then they wait for you to kind of bleed out. And that's what we saw on the show too, um, both in the TOS and in Strange New Worlds. The Gorn um, have this, like, I think with the Gorn, it's very easy to fall into a trap of portraying them as just brutish. And Star Trek has never done this. Star Trek has always portrayed them as both physically and mentally powerful. They're very patient. They're very methodical. They're smarter than they present themselves to be. And if you underestimate them, you get got. So the idea is that, like, you have this stacking damage over time component where um, anytime you do the plasma damage, it refreshes every stack that's on them, and you can stack it to an absurd degree, and the damage bypasses shields. So it, like, just slowly creeps up on the ship, and you'll quickly get to the point where the 
dot is ticking for significantly more than the weapons were. And the dot itself scales with weapon power. So would this be... Uh, yeah, so first of all, somebody said something about the numbers. Those those are just based on this ship build I threw together an hour ago. Like, those won't be your numbers. Uh, but second yeah. of all, um, would this, yeah, be this, something... oh. Sorry, this be something... Sorry, I was going to say, would this be something that would be, power... be effective to, like, turn on... Um cannon uh rapid fire and hit one ship and then hit another ship and then hit a third ship and hit get like dots on all of them exactly scan cannon scatter volley um fire at will uh even though fire at will doesn't usually proc stuff the way this is worded it does proc off out faw and of course weapon haste um because it's a dot it doesn't do so well with crit it, like it kind of interacts with crit but it's better with weapon haste it has like a more natural synergy with weapon and haste and um, it does have a little extra line on there, which is if the shield facing is down, you do additional plasma damage. Um, that's there for a couple reasons. Uh, they're like very designery, but basically because it ignores shields, I don't want it to be like stop being relevant once the shields go down. Uh, and that lets it synergize with the console, which I'll get to in a little bit. Basically, there's a, there's a few designery reasons why that has that extra text there. That's neat. Um, Moo Gaming over on YouTube uh, just said the game would make more money if uh, a Gearbox went through and fired a bunch of people, and I just want to highlight how backwards of an idea that is. Because then <laughs> less stuff would be made, and then the game would make less money. Please, please use brain when speaking. Uh, okay. Uh, this is the uh, smaller Gorn ship from Strange New Worlds uh, of the two that you see in SNW. Uh, but we also got a brand new uh, experimental weapon, the Plasma Incendiary Bombard. Yeah, it's basically a space plasma shotgun. Um, it <laughs> uh, does a whole bunch of damage, and it does even more damage to big ships. It doesn't shoot terribly quickly, you'll notice. Eight second recharge there. But each of those lines of damage applies its own stack of complex plasma fires. So if you hit a big ship with this thing, it'll take four stacks immediately. And it hits like a train. And Looks pretty it, cool, too. Does it also proc the trait? Yep. <laughs> yeah, each uh, each individual pellet. Uh, well, not each pellet, but like each of those lines of text. Um, so if you hit a dreadnought, it'll proc four times. Beautiful. Love it. Uh, all right. And then, of course, we've got our new console, which is this one over here. Uh, Lure Team Command. Tell us a little bit about this. Yeah, so this is based on that premise we were talking about earlier with the like uh, the Gorn kind of luring their foes into a trap this deploys a cloaked shuttle with a team of guys and you send it out to a location uh, you target an enemy ship um, that's like the how you target it but they fly out by there and mark that enemy ship and all and nearby enemy ships and when you approach within five kilometers it triggers the trap which does a bunch of upfront plasma damage and knocks the shields offline for 14 seconds base and that scales with drain X so um that's why uh yeah it basically renders the ship in incredibly vulnerable to your attack that is presumably ongoing because you got right up next to it and because you're deploying like a team on a shuttle you can do it while you're cloaked and you can do it from 20 kilometers it does not have the normal <laughs> range restriction because it's a separate physical ship you're allowed to like detach it while you're cloaked it'll come back while you're cloaked and um kind of like set up these enemy ships with this mark and then when you close in that's when you cash it out and um, yeah, the the reason, uh, also I forgot to mention earlier, but part of the reason for the shields down synergy is so that the trait is still like useful on a plasma build, even if you're ripping through stuff so fast, the dot wouldn't be relevant. The less relevant the dot is, the more relevant the extra damage becomes. So it's kind of a, you know, naturally balances itself. That's a neat, neat back and forth. Yeah, I like it. Uh, all right. Well, let's, uh, let's take this beautiful, weird little scorpion, space scorpion over to uh, Argala and play with some of that stuff actually before i do that i just want to make sure i have oh <laughs> i opened a newspaper <laughs> i was like what the hell is that <laughs> those were so much fun to make oh my god i remember I you had those. a lot of fun on those too oh a bunch yeah of them were used. <laughs> yeah that was that was one of my favorite writing jobs i've gotten to do on this game can i please hide this window can i please hide this endeavor window thank you okay now i can for some reason, this thing has been extremely not great for me when, nope, when trying to open the power screen, which is just P, isn't yeah. it? What am I doing? <laughs> I'm just making sure that I have um, the new tour, the new uh, console up here. Oh yeah, yeah, there it is. Okay, great. A lot of excitement about the quads, but I think those are on the ship. I think I seen those on there. Yeah, they're just they visually the same as the ones from the Warbird. They just don't do the set bonus. They 
got built to be separate, and then they have the dot damage resistance proc. Did you did you see that warp out? We might need to uh, talk to somebody about that if that's. I, I did not see it. It's covered by a different window on my screen. Oh, okay. Well, um, it didn't. It's warp using out. the. It just, it's not it, using the right one. Yeah, uh, well, it actually just didn't warp out. It just disappeared and made a flash of light. Hmm. Yeah. I could see the ship is very small. Is like when the camera zoomed in, that's not clear. But like, hmm. I had to shrink the shuttle for lure team to command because the actual size of the shuttle is like the si almost the size of the whole hunter. It's just <laughs> a little guy. <laughs> Uh, Darth Dragonborn says there's a new device on the ship. I didn't realize I had a new device on the ship. Uh, is that something with the ship, or is that... No, no new, no new device comes with it. Um, device slot Let on the critter's see. empty. Uh, Alright. Whatever, Jebuk. Uh, devices. Nukara Webbreaker. I don't know. Um... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how that got on my ship. I don't know what it is. So uh, let's get into yeah, that. Here. That's kind of a cute thing to randomly find on a ship. Yeah. Now there's a name I haven't heard in a long time. Oh, I love the way that ex that experimental weapon fires. Oh, it looks so cool. And it's inspired by um, the TOS episode and the Strange New Worlds episode. Both mention a sort of rain of fire effect. And um, my thinking was that this weapon could conceivably have been used for atmospheric bombardment. Nice. Um, uh, much like the trait complex plasma fires, it would be prone to starting complex fires, which is a type of fire where rather than having one origin point that the firefighting team can like surround and damage control, it starts the fire at lots of little points all over, you know, wherever, maybe California, who knows. And then it's like <laughs> really hard for the firefighters to deal with because it got started in a bunch of different places. Uh, somebody said uh, that device is from the Nukara rep. That makes sense to me. Oh, I could be cloaked right now. Let me cloak and deploy this shuttle. Which is this guy. Alright, lure team is out. Is that an allied ship you used it on? Uh, I don't know. I'm just, I'm having, my screen's a little squish. I will try to Oh, uh, sorry. Yes, how dare you? You have <laughs> mispositioned my screen for the last time. <laughs> it's when I, from when I broke into your house. Oh, The most recent sense. time. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I saw the mark go on anybody. I'm not sure that, I don't know what happened there. I hope it's not busted. Yeah. If it is, uh, I'll tr I'll g I got time to fix it yet, so I'm going to get it fixed, but it was working last I seen it. I'm going to just bring it back and fire it again so we can look. Makes sense. Well, that blew up immediately, so <laughs> it wasn't the most helpful test. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I think that's what's happening. I think you're, like, killing it while the ship's coming out. I never thought um, of someone, like, using it point blank on top of ships uh, as soon as it appeared. I mean, I did think of it in terms of, like, making sure the power works, but I didn't think of it in terms of your point blank on top of the ship and the ship you target dies. And then it just vanishes because it has nothing to target. Um, I honestly don't know what it does. It probably gets confused and flies around cloaked. Yeah, probably. I can get that fixed, though. Uh, Dan D says, what's with the lack of damage? Again, this is a build that I threw together an hour ago with just stuff I had in my inventory. I don't have time to make super cool stow builds builds for this these streams, unfortunately. I got a box full of them, but they wouldn't make for good streams. Stuff would just <laughs> evaporate. Yeah. Then you, we'd be stuck playing on a lead, and well, I mean, I, that might not be the worst thing, but it's starting to get a little outside of the common player experience at that point. Yeah. Just jump into ISA, finish it in 30 seconds, go, okay, that was a good stream, bye everybody. <laughs> oh, are your allies killing stuff too? Like, I th Maybe? That doesn't look like it. I've, I've seen some hits. They don't seem like they're doing enough damage to be interfering. Okay. Wow, I want to see the Lua team. All right, let me recharge it again. I'm going to uh, cloak up and go find another group, like this carrier right here, or this carrier right here. And I'm going to launch it before I attack. Oh, there it goes. I see it. A little tiny speck moving across the screen. 
Yeah, and then it should put like a big old mark on the ship. It did, yeah. Nice. If you're watching on the stream, you're a little yep. bit behind. Now me. the shields are down. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, that makes total sense. Yeah. And you, it's kind of hard to see because it's scrolling so fast. But every plasma shot is dealing extra damage. Yeah. The the dot tick is per weapon cycle. The bonus damage is not per weapon cycle. It's per individual packet of damage. So it's going to be like if you're already melting ships, it will make it more meltier. The trait doesn't just stop functioning just because it has a dot identity. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it has an EBC. I, I, it might have just be a regular battle cloak because it was on the show that they could like see through it with um, a little bit of tech wiggling. So I, I might not be an EBC. It might just be a BC. Um, Igor, Igor the Vicious, uh, as has previously been talked about in a lot of streams. Uh, unfortunately, most of our players are fed, and Federation ships just sell better. However, saying that we're not giving you Klingon ships right now on this stream seems. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe slightly confused as to what you're looking at. This is this is not a Federation ship. <laughs> this is a Gorn ship. It's here today and Gorn tomorrow. I, I love really the like here. the plasma effects, and I think I might take my ship and re-outfit it with plasma. Or I might just get this ship. <laughs> I'm going to get this ship anyway for the trade if I outfit my ship with plasma. <laughs> Uh, Gorin is part of the Klingon Empire, so it is Klingon. Yeah, the, and the behavior I intend to put on the shuttle is if the target dies, it'll just find a new target. Because it's okay. like a, a shuttle full of people. It's not like a confused robot or something. It, yeah. It just would fly just, to the Oh, whoops, thing. that blew up. Let's go find to the next one. Yep. <laughs> the forbidden fidget spinner has arrived, Dark of the <laughs> Media says. <laughs> See, this is the kind of thing that Paramount is not doing for merchandise, you know? We were talking about this last night on uh, uh, Clear Skies. Uh, Gorn ship fidget spinner. Easy money. <laughs> uh... Yeah, but the Gorn, like, Gorn puns are amazing, but we keep using them. We're going to use up all the good ones. They're just going to get worse and worse and sillier and sillier over time. You know, real flowers for Algornon. Oh, that was a deep cut one. <laughs> I was like, I know he's going somewhere with this. <laughs> But yeah, um, it's the plasma plasma ship. Uh, going forward, probably gonna. I mean, I'm still interested in pursuing a little bit more love for the alternate energy types. Uh, I feel like phasers obviously in a really good spot. Disruptors pretty solid. The rest of them are kind of question marks. So um, it'd be nice to like give them a little bit more of a discrete identity, give them a little bit more stuff they can do. And Plasma, I'm really interested in positioning as the king of damage over time, which is um, going to be an interesting challenge because the time to kill in this game is pretty quick. So like, it's going to have to be a little innovative in terms of how that works. But there have been solutions to this in other games. There are a lot of different ways that you can get damage over time to play nice with a faster time to kill. Um, the simplest is that the dot simply travels from foe to foe. Thought about doing that here, but um, ended up saving that for a rainy day. But yeah, um, definitely going to be thinking about that um, in terms of how to make the energy types feel different from each other and also how to encourage um, a little bit more like viability in stuff like if you want different colors of beams or you want weapons like especially plasma plasma is so central to the show but i'm not forgetting about the other ones i mean proton don't even got beams <laughs> that's true gotta get them some beams uh blackwing haseo if, if it were up to me we would absolutely have a gorn championship wrestling ring on uh Ryza. uh i will do everything in my my completely minimal power to make that happen <laughs> Ooh, I saw an idea in chat. I'm liking that yeah. having a, if you own a ship with quads, it lets you get the basic quads. The thing is, there's not always basic quads for every type, but yeah, I, that I, was I, the problem we had with plasma quads before, right? When we were talking mm -hmm. about putting them on that other ship. Yeah, and then it just turned out like, no, you, you're on the hook to build a whole new one. It's like, oh, I do not have time for that right now. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm I'm interested generally. Like, I've got a little spreadsheet of like unique weapon types, and this isn't an issue that just impacts quads. There's a bunch of like like uh, wide angle heavy dual B banks. Um, the energy torps are a little uh, sketchy. Like, there's a bunch of different kind of weapons that like don't necessarily have perfect coverage across different um, 
uh, ship types. And I'm just interested in like kind of proliferating that. So that and that might not all be on ships. Some of that might start showing up as mission rewards or whatever. Um, especially stuff that's meant to be more foundational. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, we need a Gorn flagship. You know, I have a feeling Strange New Worlds will not be done with the Gorn uh, in Season 2. Uh, it was such a big plot point in Season 1, and it wasn't super resolved other than, we survived! Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see more and crazier Gorn ships in the future. I'd be surprised if we don't, frankly. Yeah. And we do still got the Destroyer in our pocket. We do, and I'm excited to see that too. All right. Well, that was... I was surprised by that, I'm going to be honest, because I, uh, I I saw this thing in the show and I was like, I don't know. But um, seeing it in the game, I'm much more... Hold on, I'm backing up and that's preventing me from... <laughs> I'm, I'm much more excited by it now, the way it moves and the way it fights. And you know me and I'm a sucker for pilot ships, but that is a really cool ship. Oh, you know, that's right. You guys want to see the quad stats. Oh, yeah. They, they should just be normal. Like, I, I hope they, they dang well better be just normal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Hawk says Gorner uh, in the Season 2 trailer. So, yeah, I just missed that. A weird quirk of quads, too. They say they drain engine power, but that's a drain. It's not a cost. So if you're out of engine power for some reason, they still shoot. All quads are like that. Uh, yes, uh, I got a QA Sean, ticket. Thought about changing. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, y'all want to see? Caught up. Good, good, good. Y'all want to see some vanity shields? I can get you some vanity. Okay, we'll just do it this way. Uh, give me some requests for vanity shields. I am going to throw the alliance on this because I want to see what that looks like. Oh, oh, baby. Oh my. First choice came out real well. Alright. Yeah. People want slime devils. Ooh. Slime devil not a bad choice for this ship. <laughs> uh can I do a ship size comparison? Probably. What do you want me to combine it to to uh um compare it to? Uh looking for Fakiri, I saw that request go in. Ooh, Fakiri is interesting on this this one too. Very neat looking. I'm actually gonna. You can't. Some of these aren't showing up in the colors on this map, so I'm gonna go back to the map we were at before. That makes sense. Um, Jonathan, are you aware of the bug with emergency powers to shields? Mm -hmm. Brett, it's 70 fixed locally. That's fixed locally? Okay, so that should be coming out soon. Oh, and uh, other bug fix that was um, drew some of my attention earlier was uh, the... Um, on last stream, I mentioned that it I didn't know for sure when it, sh when it had shipped, but the Feel the Weight of Our Presence performance rework, um, that should be live at this point. So if Feel the Weight of Our Presence is still making the map chug, I want to know about it. Should be good now. Uh, Bort Cobain, uh, the inval invalid entity name, ship names, is uh, uh, something that we are working on. I believe fix number three to try and finally get rid of it is going out soon. Uh, thanks, Mark Chief. I'm glad you liked the new key art. We uh, we had a lot of work. Oh, uh, we had a lot of well, you know all that already anyway. Uh, we had a lot of work in to put into it um, to make sure we got the feel of Kumarke right because I know she's uh, such a beloved character. And it's too dark back there. Let's go over here by the sun. Yes, yeah, some of the invalid entity names we're seeing around are deliberate at this point. People have thought it was funny and threw it on their ship. Uh, Sovereign 42, that is not the only reason people use Reputation Flourish, because I use it to show off. And that's not trolling, that's just showing off. All right, cool. That Wow, Fakiri looks cool on this. Oh, man. Or sorry, as someone in chat suggested, oh my. Oh my. All right. Uh, somebody wants to see Bozeman Titans? Because of course you do. Also interesting. Maybe too many lines turning gold in, with the Titans, but... Oh yeah, somebody it's a, wanted it's to see... It's a bit busy. 
Yeah, someone wanted to see this in comparison to a constitution. I don't mind it as like a threatening villain though. It almost looks like like a Marvel bad guy. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Puppet Cruiser Odyssey, that'll work. Oh, but Odyssey is misspelled in the logical name. <laughs> There's no enchantment that that would happen over and over throughout the game. No, definitely not. All right, so here you go. This is a this is the Gorn ship next to an Odyssey. <laughs> it just went away. <laughs> He's so tiny. He's a baby ship. All right. <laughs> Whoops. All right. All right. Other other vanity shield requests, folks. Uh, Borg, okay, Borg ship, shield. Is there a Borg shield, or is it called something else? The Libborg Dreadnought shield, maybe? Oh, yeah, here we go. It doesn't Borg really shield. look like a traditional Borg ship, though. It's more like black and bluish. Um, Looks cool, though. That gave it kind of a star field in there. There's, there's got to be a board shield in the game somewhere. Yeah, chat's saying there is. I just yeah, there is. I it's, uh, it's, it's called something else. Uh, somebody asked that... for Discovery Klingon. The Libborg shield looks great. Dang. The uh, uh, Discovery Klingon, I suspected it would look great on this. I mean, you know that also means Zen Kathy and Herc are going to look awesome. So let's take a look at those. Zen Kathy... Oh, 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 that's good. Uh, okay, let's find the Herc. Here they are. Herc also good. Not as good as Zenkethi, but pretty good. Uh, okay, Omega. What are these? Oh, Discovery Refit. Why do I have three of them? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, Omega. Is it called Omega? It is called Omega. Sometimes with the old reputation shields, they don't call them, name them after the reputation, and it's like, but guys, I need it. <laughs> Omega looks pretty cool. A little bit of an older shield, so that's probably partially why it doesn't look super great, but I did see somebody ask for the dialectic, so against my better judgment. Here you go. Oh, maybe here I don't go. Even the dialectic doesn't want to be on the ship. <laughs> the sh with this one we weird trick the ship magically de-ages 20 years in game time someone asked for section 31 not as many uh, light highlights on this so I don't think section 31 and the emperors look as good uh, pink absolutely love doing pink also uh, good news but uh, not confirm news uh, but there may be more opportunities to get the pink shield again soon Oh, pink looks nice. All right, temporal Ooh, and oh. safe galaxy. Oh, that 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 neon magenta that pops. Yeah, that is nice looking cyberpunk. All right, here is. Wait, was that? Yeah, go away. This is the Terran one y'all requested. That's pretty cool. Kind of a stealth version. Uh, and somebody else asked for something, and I can't remember what it was now. So you'll have to throw it back in the chat, folks. Um, I didn't see that question, Jonathan. So if you saw it in full, uh, and you feel free to ask for more details. Yeah, there was like an implication that pilot abilities are still not working right on console, and I am interested because that is supposed to be working at this point. Especially the um the there was like an issue where it wasn't properly queuing uh um the uh, weapon haste power, um and if that's still busted, that is disappointing. But hey, I don't know, I'll just go ahead butt it again until it works. Some of these some of these problems got multiple hit bars, as we are seeing with unavailable entity names. Sometimes. Yeah. You hit it and it you hit it and it just won't die. <laughs> please, please stop getting up. 
Uh, I don't think I have Safe Galaxy on here, unfortunately, in this pack yet. Uh, I'll have to make sure I add that. But I don't see it. And uh, also seeing a question about um, dual heavy beam banks not working with haste, uh, that's probably going to get addressed when I go and make another dual heavy beam base bank, essentially. Like, that would be the perfect time to fix that, so. Cool. Um, I might end up deciding I like it more when they don't work with haste, because I like it when not everything synergizes with everything. We'll see. I, I might sometimes do the designer thing. Yeah. Uh, so, um, Spicy Ball Meat said, uh, wants to know about any ETA on the Courage class issue, where it just keeps spinning right round, baby. Right round. Uh, that sounds like a costume thing to me. I am. Yeah. Okay. I don't have that Ken. I know that bug got reported and looked in. Ooh, 32nd century looks nice on this too. Very clean. All right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, here's the Borg. It's like you're shield. getting murdered by a can of Fresca. Yeah. Yeah. There's the Borgified version. The sweet that taste looks of television nasty, static. but in a good way. Uh, Constitution three class when soon, but n not right, not very soon, but not. Not soon. <laughs> the Borg shield just makes it look like double Gorn. Like yeah. it's even Gornier. All the way across the sky. What does it mean? Uh, all right. Um, casual SAB. Uh, the two new patrols will have a normal version and a hard version. There'll be more details about that on Friday. Uh, but the... Um, uh, it's not a new difficulty for the whole game, just for those two patrols. Uh, but it should hopefully give you all something to throw yourselves at. Oh my god, the Platinum Vanity Shield. I believe the word I'm looking for is... <clears throat> well, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a... It's an interesting kind of like contrast right like because that's yeah. the kind of visuals you'd expect to see on like you know space above and beyond like a classic sci-fi action romp but yeah. the design is much more you know avant-garde yeah it looks like um uh a ship from babylon 5 like not specifically any ship from babylon 5 but it was the kind of thing that it would be in babylon 5 sure yeah i could see um the drazi thrown down with one of those easy like oh the minbari ship is three pieces drazi <laughs> ship three pieces <laughs> Uh, all right, medical shield is the last request I'm taking, and then we're going to wrap this up. Um, oh, medical shield looks exactly like how you'd expect, and that's actually that's the animeist the ship can look. That is <laughs> so anime. <laughs> I love it. Wait, whoops. All it's right. like a '90s toy. Yeah, exactly. It's a Beyblade. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, John, thank you so much for joining us. I am going to find us someone to raid. Um, while I'm doing that, uh, please recite as many digits of pi as you have memorized. Someone in chat said that it looks like Picard's artificial heart cannot unsee. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Okay. So Endeavor is just streaming our stream. <laughs> so you're not getting raided, buddy. But I love you. <laughs> Sneaking in a quick last-minute question. Um, yeah. Someone asked if the dot and pl bonus plasma damage uh, scale with EPG. The dot doesn't, but the bonus is two dot damage. So the shred from the quad cannon, the bonus on the console, those things will work with most exotic damage things because most exotic damage things are DOT. Not, you know, not the ones that do one point of damage, you know, or one instance of damage, but, like, yeah. Stuff like G-Well and Tykins and stuff are all DOT flagged, as are a lot of the consoles, a lot of the more popular ones. Yeah. Uh, Admiral Sean, this is this ship is coming to the Infinity Lockbox. That's why there's the Infinity Lockbox is mentioned in the stream title. Ah, someone in chat mentioning Gornus Christ. I am a Gornigan Christian. It's true. Oh, boy. Uh, D Hunter Wallen, um, we did talk a couple of years ago about the idea of um, letting players, when they were going to buy their ship, like buy a ship, see the ship exiting space dock, and you know, with all the dramatic music and stuff. The problem is, uh, all of our ships are bigger than space dock, uh, which is a problem they handle in the show by making the ship smaller when it leaves space dock, <laughs> and then bigger as soon as it's out of space dock. <laughs> oh, we didn't do seats. We didn't. Talk oh, we didn't seats do seats. Oh my gosh. And consoles. Oh yeah, we, we gotta. We gotta, <laughs> we gotta do that. We gotta. We did the console, but we didn't. We didn't show. It's got five no, engineering, one science, yeah. and five tactical. 
How strange that is! That's yes. A, what did what, you were so happy when I used a, a surprise tool that will help us later? <laughs> Why might I care that it has five inch consoles as well as five tech? Is it inch because consoles of aren't used plasma? for anything special. Who knows? <laughs> It might not even ship, so maybe nobody ever, but hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, this ship has a Lieutenant Commander Universal Miracle Worker, a Lieutenant Commander Universal, a Lieutenant Universal, an Ensign Universal, and a Commander Tactical Pilot. So this is a Miracle Worker pilot ship, if you didn't know that. Yeah. Primary yeah. pilot, secondary miracle worker. Yeah. Um, someone was asking about low buy items. Those will all the more info on those will be coming on Monday, but um, they are I think all three of them are Strange New Worlds themed, so uh, let that cascade through your mind. None of them are like cosmetic uniforms. Uh, there are some well no, they are, aren't they? Some of them are, but they're not the uniform. They're not the Strange New Worlds uniforms. <laughs> I just want to get that out there so people aren't like, he promised the Strange New Worlds uniforms. <laughs> Uh, all right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, all right. Well, let's head on and raid this person over here. They said uh, their title of their screen is cap stream is Captain. We've engaged the Gorn, so it seemed appropriate. Um, but before we go, Jonathan, thank you so much for joining us, and thank all of you for tuning in. Why am I pointing as if there's other cameras? There's one camera. Thank all of you for tuning in, uh, and we will see you next time. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye now. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye, bye. I shouldn't. I should have started that later. Here we go. Bye. <laughs>